guys, and welcome back to the Burger Talk Show. <laughs> Today oh we have God. Faith. Hello. Such a beautiful name, right? For a believer. I love it, right? My mom did that on purpose. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Okay? So today, what are we eating? We are Tell eating me. some herb spicy. It's not even that spicy, but it's like an herb seasoned rice. It's spiced real well. Okay. Like, it's well balanced. Oh. It's, it's amazing. Go ahead, Rosemary, okay, really. mm -hmm. lemon. Like, y'all, I don't think I've ever had a well-rounded red snapper like this. Ooh. And it's, it's done really well. And I'm just drooling right now. Thank you. We're red snapper, because she wanted the fish. And she specifically <laughs> said, I do not want the fries. So we baked it. Oh. That's how I usually like my fish in there, so it was perfect. I think it makes sense that way. It makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's deep fried. I feel like you're deep frying the nutrients as well. Exactly. Yeah? Exactly. You know so It's all batter. And what is in the batter? Flour, corn, starch. Like, you want to hear something crazy? What? Because it's all batter, and I don't like batter that much when I do eat fried fish, mm. I tend to just peel it off. Oh. So it makes no sense. So usually I do fish baked. Once oh, wow. in a while I'll do fried. Interesting. Yeah, I'm not big. So if you if you go out to eat and eat like fried fish, you say you peel the skin off and Yeah, I look like a rat. It's, <laughs> my plate just look messy. Girl. Because it's like bad on this corner. Oh fish is it's horrible. But sometimes they don't fry it right. It's too separated from the, the skin yeah. and it's just like a pocket of air. Hence why I don't really go to restaurants like that. Mm. Heard. Yeah, so let's take a bite. Mm-hmm. Listen. And oh, and then we have Angelica. She will be chiming in mm -hmm. from time to time. That's the bestie. Okay. Bestie. She will be bestie. chiming in. <laughs> mhm. Mm and this is pretty easy too. And guys, the secret is this is even a secret. Crap. The best rice, hands down, mm. is jasmine rice. Really? Why? Wait, that's a long grain rice, right? No. Mm. Ja rice? No, but you know why we like Chinese food? Because they use jasmine rice. Yes. Wait, wow. so jasmine rice, is they call it jasmine rice because is there, like, is it blended with jasmine flowers or something? Or no, like, but that's a good thought. No. I don't know where jasmine came from. I don't know if homegirl discovered it, but mm. Mm. that's why it makes Ghanaian jollof better than Nigerian jollof because we use jasmine and y'all use parboil, but I digress. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to start eating bees right neck. now. She's coming for y'all next. I'm just saying. She All said, right? I have. A proclamation. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty good. It is. Isn't I'm not it? gonna lie, it's, it's been a long time since I've had fish with bone. Oh, because so, you use a fish fillet? Yeah, just the. I feel like. In it's too much some, work. Yeah, but it's not, well, it's not too much work. It's just like the fish with bone has more flavor. Yes. Um, the, the, it's like, yeah, the juice from the from the um, st um the spine is just adds mm. to everything. That's but what it, I didn't know that. When you hear something funny when I first came to America and yeah. everything was filet, filet, filet. No. I said, ah, I used to call it filet. <laughs> I said, filet. What's this? Is this, how's this fish? And when did you, how old were you when you got here? Eight or nine. Oh, One of them. Wow. I came to 2000. I just missed the 90s. Oh, wow. wow. You were eight years old, little baby. Mm hmm. Just missed the 90s. And you came to New York? Yep, straight to New York. And I was so confused. You just <laughs> took me from Africa, where it's mad hot. <laughs> Yo. To come, I'm not going in Jan no, February. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Great uh -huh. city. Mm -mm. I used to be so depressed. I didn't know I was mm. depressed then. I'm going to take me back. Because they didn't tell me I was coming here. They just told me I was taking a trip to Accra, which is the capital. Mm. I didn't say goodbye to my, my friends at school. What? No, none of that. It wasn't a trip. It became a forever trip. Now, I, I feel like a slave, actually. Now that I'm talking about it. Oh. You know how they did the slaves? Is that how they did the slave? It is. Dang. I gotta talk to my parents. That's crazy. Traumatic. You meant to say bye to your friends? No, because I thought I was going back. Never oh, went back. No, that is Dang, so that sad. is a slave story right there. That's crazy. That's I trauma. Never thought about that. Nah, next episode with Verda's <laughs> parents. <laughs> Why'd you do that? <laughs> Why'd you do that? <laughs> Why'd you do that? And the crazy thing. <laughs> so it was like, it was such a, it's a weird experience sometimes because I am Ghanaian, yeah. Mm. However, I grew up here. I'm 33 mm. now, so most of my growing up I here is, you know, <laughs> facts, right? <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you. So I grew up here. I'm a one time, I was trying to, because me and they was having a conversation, though he's American, he was mm. trying to have a conversation. And he's talking about a lot of times he never felt like he belonged mm. in America, mm. like belonged to America mm. because of the history. Mm. It was hard for me to understand that once I think God did this one, I felt mad out of place and lonely and just like, 
not belong there. Mm. Because I'm not from here. So I'm not accepted as an American. Mm. At the same time, because I, most of my growing up was here, mm. I'm not getting in enough. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Not that anybody said anything, anything to me, but it was just like, dang. Because yeah. if I go to Ghana, it will be like, oh, you're yeah, American. You're American, yeah. But if I'm American, oh, you're Ghanaian. I'm just like, well, what the hell do I say? Oh, wow. wow. This, this might be how black Americans feel. You know, yeah, I think, the like, the world has become more of a melting pot now, mm-hmm. too. True. Because there's so many intercultural mixes with relationships, friendships. People be living in one place, military families going all over the place. Right, true. So I think that's the dilemma of a lot of people. Where do I belong? Yeah. You know? Yeah, and the scary thing that I noticed in the black community is, the black American community is, because they don't, they feel out of place and trying to connect. Mm-hmm. Now they, because they're trying to connect so hard, they're the against the African mm. um, spiritualism, mm-hmm. voodoo and all that stuff, you know, because it's like, right. this is what my ancestors said. They're trying to do everything that's, right. I hate this, but they're trying to do everything that's not white. But yeah. Christianity is not a white man's religion. It's not. But it's a deeper conversation that Lord, no, if you want to go into it, let's talk about it. Because, okay. <laughs> it um, is not a white man's religion. But because I feel like they want to dive, they want to know or feel some type of connections. Yeah, people are searching for identity and knowing that our identity was stolen when we got here. It makes sense. I don't right. think it's wrong for people to look for their roots. Right. You know, but when you reestablish and are re-aware of your identity in Christ. Yeah. Then it makes so much more sense. Right. You know, then you could still you could still go back to the archives. Right. You know, of you know, my family was taken from this country and we'll right. figure it out. And you'll still learn so a lot of things. Who knows? You might find out that one of your great 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 grandfathers that was a king was a Christian priest right. or something. Right. Like, you know? Right. No that that's very true. And I feel like I was just telling um somebody this and slapping. Huh? This is why I couldn't be okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have, I wouldn't know how to stop. <laughs> she just, <laughs> it's so good. But I think what, but saying attacks your identity. Like this whole crap that the world is seeing, mm. well, let me speak for America, but let's just say the world mm. is it's seeing, world. it's an identity crisis. Yeah. I'm a he, I'm a she, I'm a they, I'm a them. I'm just, it, he's coming for your identity. It's not even necessary about what you like he's if you i remember i had the conversation about to a friend that is mm-hmm. he's gay and mm-hmm. i was just like it's not about you being gay or straight it's about your identity being attacked mm-hmm. who are you so he's telling who you are you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying mm-hmm. so it's like this is what's being attacked mm-hmm. we're looking at the surface issue but the deep rooted rooted thing is whether if you're gay straight mm-hmm. black white your identity is what's being attacked yeah people i mean i strongly believe as someone who formerly queer mm-hmm. as heck i was outside mm-hmm. um like i don't think that sexual like the sexual um attraction that people have i think because they don't know their identities it's easy to just claim that as identity Mm -hmm. so people start just claiming whatever like oh i'm some people claim their religion as their identity like i'm like you know what i mean or yeah for sure their race as well but Mm -hmm. they look for any attributes within themselves to be to be all of them Mm -hmm. and that's not what it is right i we all know what the bible says about homosexuality it is a sin right um but I think the 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 big thing about like why people are trying to like make it this my identity is because they just don't really know who they are. Yeah. You know. But Which I will so say that it's for those who that have experienced same sex loves and attractions. Sometimes it feels like the truest love you that you'll ever experience. Mm. It's not just like a oh I just want to do this because I don't know who I am. Like nah, sometimes it feels right. Yeah. You know. But I feel like one thing I've learned from my past experiences, because mm. saying different tried that with me, I'm like, fam, I know I'm smoking weed. Mm. And getting high, getting high, drinking, but that I know nothing. Mm. But then it was out of fear. He used mm. fear to make me, well, to try to make me turn that around. I'm just like, mm. oh, that's how you get people. Mm. So those who either been abused, or and that's not always the case. Yeah, who's been hurt, or mm. what, or father not there, mother not, whatever the case may be. Mm. I realized, oh, you use, use this fear to turn you the other way because it's just like, oh mm. no. And he used your traumas. Mm-hmm. I was just watching this guy's testimony, and he used mm-hmm. to be a Satanist. Mm-hmm. And he was talking about. Oh, I have a friend that's a Satanist. Wow. I've, I like talking to people that are very, very different to learn, like more. Because if you don't, if 
if you know why you believe what you believe, mm -hmm. you can talk to anybody. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, you believe in the devil. Okay, why do you believe in the devil? And you hear your mouth. Yeah. I'm like, okay, all right. Well, I I understand where you're at. That's why I love apologetics because uh, you hear Adia, you talk. You and Adia could go for hours. Adia? Yes. Oh, Adia. Yes. I haven't seen Adia in so long. I know. He loves apologetics. That's his Yo. thing. Yo. But it's like, it's things when someone something rules someone's whole life yeah like i'm just like wow like you chose that yeah why do you choose that you know and it oftentimes it strengthens your own faith you know to see mm. why some people just are lifted in so much pride or just wanting oh, to just do what that they want to do part. pride yo, that pride part is yo that's the pride. devil it's, it's the, the devil, devil. God is the devil <laughs> like it, no it's what got him kicked out of heaven before he be, even became mm -hmm. the devil there was no saying to tempt you he right. pride did so, and now I remember my coworker always laughing at me. He's like, oh gosh, here you go with pride. That is one That's thing true. I'm just like, I try so hard to be aware of. Mm -hmm. Because even when you're thinking you're being so, we, I know somebody that right now in his mind, he's not doing bad. He's doing great. Mm -hmm. But he has spiritual pride to a point. He thinks mm -hmm. he's close to God, but he's so far away. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's because hard. of spiritual pride. Pride is so scary. Um, and the thing, I'm mean, me and Damo was having a conversation too. I think either this week or last week. And he asked me, "What was the first thing that, the first lie that Satan, I'm mean, saying, told Adam and Eve?" Mm. I said, "Oh, uh, what he said? Would you, you, um, no, I forget what he said, but I said my response was. Mm. But he was like, no, the first lie, the first sin was, you be like God. Mm. And, God, mm. oh." <laughs> Oh, shout out to the homie for checking home. in. Right. That's good? That yeah. shirt is so cute, though. Thank you. I got it from some thrift store. It was like $12. I love it. And it feels really itchy. If you feel the fabric, it feels <laughs> weird. But when it's on, it's super like, wow. At the same time, it feels like 10 roaches crawling on you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit. Beauty pain. Beauty is pain. Um, yeah. But no, but he was like, no, the first lie he told Adam Eve, Adam and Eve was, you'll be like God. So back to identity issues, mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of it is being attacked because we wouldn't be so much like God. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't tell us so. Yeah. We are, I am, God made me a woman, but I'm a man. Or God made me, I need you to do this. No, I'm going to serve my, I'm going to do my own thing. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm going to serve my own God. I'm going to create my own God. I'll have my own show. I'm going to do whatever, whatever, because we are trying to be like him. Mm -hmm. First of all, I, God, you can hear me. I do not want your job. <laughs> Let part. me tell you something. That's because. You I ain't gonna hold you. The time? Oh my god! I will cancel that rainbow. Like, forget it. All y'all, all y'all, all y'all gonna die. Sorry. All the the way out the flooded this whole joint. <laughs> like we were just talking about that earlier. Like yo, <laughs> yo, the way out the flooded this whole joint. Yo, like no, because it's it's so evil. And even the guy that I was talking about with his testimony, he said mm -hmm. he do, he because his mother sacrificed them to the cult. Oh my god, you're talking about James Kaluuya? Yes. Wow. That's crazy. All right? three hours. That was crazy. Wild. It took me a couple of days. It was a lot. One day old to a six year old witch. Okay. <gasps> the power of prayer. Yo, the power of community prayer. Oh my god. But then Yo. Say, hearing what he said about how oh, saying oh. uses your trauma. Mm. Remember, multiple times they try to break him. Yeah. Right? And then look at this culture now mm. i love the fact that we are not recognizing what is trauma accepting it and working on it yeah however i feel like we've gone to a place where we are glorifying it mm. we are, and we are claiming it oh mm. that's my trauma the minute you mm. say mine wow that's you you hold that that's for that's you for real. You that's really another claim to identity too that's like my even point? the yeah. negative things you want it to be part of your that's wild i give you one mental il illness and mm. all like uh disabilities autism uh, uh, what if this is a big thing about it? Mm. We went from accepting it because humans we struggle with balance for to some reason it. to glorifying no. it. Talk about it. I'm autistic. No, I am a person who struggles with autism. Mm -hmm. I'm schizophrenic, mm -hmm. right? I'm schizophrenic. No, I'm a person who struggles with schizophren mm -hmm. schizophrenia. But if you claim it's like, I'm this, I'm that, mm -hmm. oh yeah, that's yours. Mm -hmm. It's all yours. Instead of saying I struggle with anxiety, oh I have anxiety, mm -hmm. and you. Oh, look at me. I'm taking my anti-depression anti -depression, um, mm -hmm. pills. Mm -hmm. You're, we went from, it's like, we, but the thing is that yeah. humans, we're made to worship. Right. Right? Right. right. So if we're not if worshiping we're not, yo, Jesus, yep. any and everything like clowns, we are going to worship. <laughs> we are going to worship. 
So if we're not it's, careful, it's not a choice. This is our natural, nature, right. natural affinities. Like we worship things naturally. I, wow, that is so good. And I was just, I remember uh, this week I saw somebody car, mm -hmm. and they had a um, not the license plate cover, mm -hmm. and it's like autism awareness. I'm like, but why? Why are you so obsessed with this disability? Mm. The mm. Well, I think the awareness. Saying but why is it on your car? Maybe there's someone like. Here's the thing. That's what I like to understand both mm -hmm. sides. The awareness of it is to acknowledge that someone has a disability, so handle with care. Mm -hmm. Not like claim it and this is, gonna be, this is your life and we exalt and we mm -hmm. praise it, but just like, hey, just be aware because it's most of. Let me swallow this food because oh. <laughs> I can't move face. <laughs> Um, for most of this timeline, right, mm -hmm. with mental health, a hundred years ago, autism probably wasn't one of the things. They would just right. put you in a, in a psych yeah. ward and give Horrible you a treatment. lobotomy, whatever. They Horrible take your brain treatment. out and all this stuff. But now it's just like, okay, don't get me wrong. I mm. also agree with the parts of just being like, we shouldn't be exalting these things. Yeah. But when it comes to like a, being aware of it, like you said with, with trauma, like it's one thing about being aware of it and being mm -hmm. like, okay, I need to help. And this, mm -hmm. this is what it is. And I see it coming out in my life in this way. How can I help it mm -hmm. or whatever? So I think in that case, like autism awareness, maybe the, pers that the person that's driving is autistic or has a son or a daughter. Okay. You know what I mean? But if you're autistic, cool. If you have a son or a daughter, mm -hmm. I don't understand why it needs to be on your car. I feel that. That's kind of weird. Mm -hmm. But what is like... What is the per like when I have my car and mm -hmm. I put my university's plaque on it? Mm -hmm. I'm proud to say I went Explain to UMES. Mm -hmm. I'm proud to say I went to HBCU. I'm mm -hmm. proud of it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I put it on my car so everybody could see. So mm -hmm. it's like it makes me think: Are you proud of it? Not to be ashamed of it. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? I worked people with autism for years. Mm -hmm. Really, I always make a joke. I'm like, we all autistic just a little bit. It's a little yeah. bit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Everybody is, but so I understand that community. I love that people have a better. I like when people have a better understanding of how they operate mm -hmm. and work with them. Yes. Yeah. It's just that I'm just trying to understand why mm -hmm. the why behind. Where, where did you say you went to school? University of Maryland. Okay, so you like, you have a University of Maryland sticker on your car, right? I don't. I bought it. Okay. I just never put it, but I would like to. For, so for the, sake of, for the sake of the example, you have mm -hmm. a sticker on your car because you're proud of this school that you went to. Mm -hmm. Someone in the back, because first off, it's in, your, it's in the back of your car, so it's mm -hmm. not even like you've seen it. Mm -hmm. You know it already in your heart and mind and past that you went to the school. You're mm -hmm. proud of your experience there. It's on the back of your car. Someone else driving mm -hmm. in the back sees it, mm -hmm. and they also went there. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. already a kinship okay. that happens there. Uh -huh. They don't drive past you and be like, hey, gang, mm -hmm. you know, or, or I see you, mm -hmm. or let's say y'all had bad experiences there, like, yo, you're seen, we're together, you know, what, mm -hmm. whether, because in college, it's not all positive, it's there's struggles right. there, True. too, there's, yeah. there's some angry die. teachers, yeah, things mm -hmm. all kind of, so there's a camaraderie there, so even from a sticker that's autism awareness, right, mm -hmm. maybe it may be something that you can't fully relate to, because you're not, well, I know you said everybody a little bit, mm -hmm. but um, for someone that is seeing that, mm -hmm. there's, they feel a connection to the, they, you don't know what they could be going through like right. i'm autistic i can't even drive to see the road right now because mm -hmm. i'm on the highway whatever mm -hmm. autism awareness like i see you the, it doesn't it's sense. not a celebration but it's like a no that makes that's a good perspective i didn't, I didn't think about it that way but mm -hmm. that makes sense because i mean don't get me wrong there's mm -hmm. i also agree with the fact that sometimes it could be you know autistic party like no it shouldn't be like that yeah but you know no. i think what the with our generation especially given the lack of identity and the isolation that we see people mm. want community so bad so bad and people just want to be seen so bad but don't want god jesus yo and don't want and that's the answer and it is the answer that's like, the answer and that's the sad part you know you know oh lord that is the sad part yeah because people will go the through all the lengths right to to, to find this all. community bond over traumas mm -hmm. do all these things but they don't want to seek the kingdom of god and then, then i'm gonna talk about it before with I think my friend Stephanie, people mm. try to create their own peace with the sound baths and the sage and all. I'm like, but it's, it's so it's, sad, sis. That's because the continuous. This is tiring. How do? You... It's so sad. Like, I didn't do the sage things, but like I've been in rooms. I've dated people that were doing that stuff, and it's just like, it's just this constant seeking, and you're getting nowhere. Nothing. Like you're it's literally getting piece. nowhere. It actually doesn't even bring you peace. It's like a placebo effect. Mm. You smell some some plants burning and you think you have peace, but you go back in your room and you're still miserable, like mm. for real. Like the peace of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is like my favorite thing right now yeah. because I just be waking up so hyped. Yeah. 
Let me be happy. Joy. Just, just hype. <laughs> you know? And I'm alive, like, baby. <laughs> and God is on my side. Yeah. And it's like, I just want, my heart breaks for the people that were in the church and left. That. That. Because like, and because of people, because of people that hurt them, because of yeah. people that didn't church see them. Church hurts deep. It's real. It runs deep. It does. Church hurt. Like, church hurts is real. I remember my old church. Mm. Don't judge me, y'all. I will never. <laughs> I Never. left my church after cursing out one of the a couple of the people because it was a, a lot of bad talk about you said me. Gratata? Yeah, I did. I did Ooh. not hold back. I came with bullets flying. Oh, every, every bullet. Water, please. Every bullet had. Um, go ahead. Every bullet had. It's right there. Oh, I can't prepare. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Sorry, I like a lot of water. I, this kind of meal have to eat water. I was like, I hope you don't like juice like that because this kind of meal is cold mm -mm. water. Mm -mm. No, that was right. Water is the best thing. It is. Okay. Thank you, Angelica. Thank you, Angelica. No, no, but every Angela bullet had, <laughs> every bullet had somebody's name on it. I came in really? there. Yeah, I came in the gun. And so this is at a much older church. Old, my older church. Was it Pentecostal? Oh. No, it's Methodist. Oh. Man. Yeah, cursed them out. Right. Left. Wow. Wow. Right. Call my mother. She she didn't curse, but she definitely went in on them. Mm. Right, because it was talking about me and my cousin and my family for years. We just been ignoring it, mm. and that took a lot. <laughs> the type of person I am, I'm going to tell you, you don't talk, girl. Mm. You know, so it took me a lot to not say anything for so many years. So mm. I left, but then when before I left, I made a promise to God, like I would never let people run me out the church again. Mm. Right, and He sent me to BT. Wow. So even wow, how with BT, it, how I ain't going back talking anything, but you know. With everything I that happened. I don't know anything. Yeah. I don't know, but I just. I know a lot of people left. That's it. That's yeah, that's it. But I never left. He's like, because I people come to me like, oh, why you still getting need to leave? I'm like, but the Lord didn't send me anywhere. Mm. I don't, I don't follow the crowd. Yes. I, I don't, because not all churches that say hallelujah, amen are for the Lord. That's Some people true. go to freaking Satan for their powers. That's true. So I don't go to any and everyone until wow. God tells me, hey, okay, I need you to move now. Mm. And he moved us, but not to a church building. Like, mm. we do our Bible studies here. This is our mm. church, our home. Mm -hmm. Okay? I I don't know what happened mm -hmm. at BT, but I know that at that time in my life, I was ashamed to go to church. Mm. And then... So I'm definitely ashamed to teach people that. You know, it's not even ashamed. It was just like, I can't be outside and then come on Sunday and raise my hands. This is an embarrassment. Like, mm. I know what I'm doing, yeah. so... What I want to do right now is be outside. Mm -hmm. So I did that. You want to please yourself. You want to be on guard. Yeah. I did. Please the fresh, flesh. Mm -hmm. And it got me nowhere. <laughs> you know what I used to think? Hmm. When, I, when I realized what was happening with you, I didn't know you that much. Sorry. I just knew in yeah, passing. And we just like, <laughs> we used to just see in passing. I just used to get old, very hyped. Oh. Right? I was like, yo, faith is here. Everybody, yo, actually, whenever you came around, people got hyped. Like, faith is here, faith is here. Uh -huh. So That's the Lord. The when Lord I saw happened. you go, what was happening? I was just like, mm. is somebody talking to her? Mm. And I think for a few times, I'm being completely honest, Please for a few times, raw. you would still come to the church. And I'm just like, I yeah. love to be loving and accepted. Yeah. But who's going to tell her, hey, this is not okay? Mm -hmm. Are we all so afraid? No one said a word. That is sad. No one said a word. Let me actually, let me. Yeah. That breaks my heart. But I think I was already too, like, I didn't give people opportunity to. Like, mm. I wasn't still in the circles. You know what mm. I mean? Like. But it could be a text. It could be a call. Whether you listen or not. I mean, shout out. Shout out. There is one. Mm -hmm. There is one. I'm going to call out her name because that's my nigga. <laughs> Michelle Rainford. Mm. That's my sis. Not the whole government. The whole government. I, the whole government. <laughs> I love her to death. Um, and at that time that she was closest, she was closest to me okay. and every step of the way she was like, sis, this is what the Bible say. Mm -hmm. Sis, I'm praying for you. Yeah. Like she, she never let up. Amen. She, she never let up. And I, God used her. I love her to Amen. death. That is my cool. Um, but, but is this, yeah. I feel like it's this fear of saying something, um, you know, by the way, this is all God because that's this is not what I had planned for the conversation. <laughs> I'm just letting you know. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I think it's this fear 
of making somebody uncomfortable. It's this fear of like, yeah. you know, but you see your sister, your brother falling, you know, you, and that's the thing that pisses me off about Western Christianity. Mm. You got folks in Africa or, or not even in Africa, because what well, African countries that are mm. predominantly Muslim, you got folks in Asia dying for believing in Jesus, yeah, okay? And still going out, doing the work. Yeah. And over here, we just be afraid of, like, uh, discomfort. It's the love That's movement. wild to me. It's the, it's the whole love, no shade to hill song, but just that, like, God, the lamb. The only preach the lamb. Yeah, never the right. lion. Right, right. That's a Jesus good... Jesus is a lion. Right. And a lamb. Right. Mm -hmm. But the... But I realized too, like my old church, the um, African church was a lot of the line of God, the line, of, there was just a lot, a lot, the lot of the lion. Mm -hmm. So probably used to be so scared of God. Mm -hmm. I remember one time I was texting in church and I was like bugging up. I'm like, Jesus is about to burn <laughs> my he joint. Text right? He's going to burn my joint because I'm texting because I was so wow. afraid of God mm -hmm. because that's how it was being preached. Come mm -hmm. to BT. It was a lot of the lamb of God. They talked about the lion too, but it's like, I realized mm -hmm. it's too much of one thing mm -hmm. either it's too much lamb and not enough of the lion or it's too much lion to not enough lion, um, lamb but it's just like but that's what we're supposed to do in our time with the lord outside right. of church there's no church that's a perfect balance like, right like and i think True. i'm not throwing shade to anybody but i'm just saying because i was also at a, in a church community too mm -hmm. and not spending time in my word or prayer outside of sundays yeah and, that's a fact. and friday night youth in the industry you know there's a lot of us there's a lot of us that you know so I understand. That's why I don't. I'm not holding anyone like to a like. Why didn't you help yeah. me out? Like I get it, yo. Like we just really out here because we all want high school to be extended. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. Like, and we out here having fun or whatever. And yeah, we not shaking our butts at the club. So we're here. How do you hold someone accountable when you know they're in sin? I don't know. Yeah. Like you know, at that time, that I, I don't think any of us really knew how to. But that's why we're supposed to be strong in our walk. Yeah. So when we do see somebody else falling, we are able to pick them up. But we can't do it because half of us, like you said, mm -hmm. only do church on Sundays. I mean, but at that time, mm -hmm. we 21, 20 years old, like the mindset's different now. But then you have people, you know, 15 mm -hmm. years old. Yeah. I just don't want us to keep making excuses for ourselves. You get That's what I'm saying? Real. That's real. You got people in other countries, 15 years old, praying in tongues, That's healing surreal. people. So it's like, at what point do we say, mm -hmm. yo, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. you, could, you could say that, oh, I'm not that kind of person to be that blunt. Maybe mm -hmm. it's easier for me to say it because mm -hmm. I'm that person. I'm, I'm going to call you out. Mm -hmm. And there been times I'm like, it been times when I was in college. Mm -hmm. I got one better for you. Mm -hmm. High and drunk as hell. Mm -hmm. My friend at the time, he was a, he used to lead the pray me and all that stuff on campus, became mm. an offer, that's mm. a different story, mm. offer the fraternity, right, mm. and started turning. Mm. As I was high and drunk, I'm sitting right across, but he's sitting in the back, I'm sitting in his chair, I'm talking, and God is like, talk to him. I'm like, God, how? Mm. Wait, what brain? This joint is fried, and I'm drunk. What are we talking I myself wow. am not doing right. How can I, mm. how dare I talk to him about the way he's living? Mm. And I'm saying he's cheating with him. Mm. And I tell you, about a good 30 minutes, at least probably longer, I don't know. I spoke to that man mm. about how he's, and it was not me talking. Mm. It was a whole spirit just, and I told him straight up, just like I told I said, listen, child, this is not me talking. Mm -hmm. This is God because I'm drunk. <laughs> <laughs> like it being completely honest, My like flesh it, ain't here. It, it, it's not here, you know. Mm -hmm. All to say that God could use you wherever, That's but true. we have to put ourselves in position to be the soldiers that He needs to mm -hmm. reach people. But if we don't put ourselves in this position, say, "Oh, I'm too young." So at what point? Yeah. And He said, if He puts on your heart, this is biblical, mm -hmm. to tell somebody about Him and you don't, and they die, which I actually mm -hmm. experienced. Their blood is on your hand. Oh my God. That's what the Bible says. I'll give wow. an example. I had a, co uh, a staff. This is a couple of months before COVID, probably January, February. She was going through something with her uh, stepfather who had cancer. She come wow. to me. Hey, buddy, can you pray for my um, stepfather? Da, da, da. I said, yeah, I pray for him. I said, but you're Natasha, you can pray for him yourself too. Like, it's mm -hmm. better come for you than me. Mm -hmm. She said, yeah, I know, but I'm not ready. Yet. But before I even had that conversation about God, mm -hmm. first I said, okay. And Jesus is like, Tell her about me. I'm like, girl, she just said, she ain't trying to hear about you. Let's be for real. Wow. He said, tell her about me. I said, all right. So I told her, I said, you know, you can pray to God yourself. It's better come from you than me because it's direct, mm -hmm. right? She said, yeah, yeah, but I'm not ready for church. I said, hold on, time off. I just said nothing about church. Right. I said, talk to God for yourself. Yeah. You have your own relationship, so you don't have to keep coming to me. Right. You can just straight talk to him. Right. 
saying, yeah, I know, but I'm just not ready. I'm like, ready for what? I didn't ask you to go to a church building right. once again. She said, I said, all right. Left her alone. COVID happened. We go on, we go remote, right? <laughs> so my mother got COVID. It was really bad. Mm. Really, really bad. So I had to take her. I had to take her away and take care of her. My aunt, unfortunately, passed away from it. Uh, so my mother, they were just like at the same time. You know? So it was really a, a trash time. So I said, yo, Tasha, can you, I was a supervisor, hold my position down for two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, and please, I know you've been here longer than me. You've been in this mm -hmm. company for a very long time. So you know more than I, you know, you know more than everybody else. So mm -hmm. hold it out until I come back. Mm -hmm. And me and her used to go at it because, mm -hmm. you know, she was older and it was like a struggle for older people to respect mm -hmm. younger people when they were supervised. So, so they, they used to make, it used to make it him, her and other staff used to make it very hard for me. Mm -hmm. Right. But I couldn't fire them because I'm just, it was hard for me to fire them because I'm mm -hmm. like, they got kids. How they going to put food right. on the table? Right. <coughs> Excuse me. You. Thank you. How they going to put food on the table? Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be the reason why somebody is struggling. Right. right? Um, so fast forward. After one day of being a supervisor, she said, because a year before that, a year before that prayer, I said, God, I hope one day one of them could actually experience being a supervisor and see how hard this is. Wow. So back to COVID times. Wow. She sent me a text after like a day of being a supervisor. Said, <laughs> after a day. A day. She said, well, Brenda, I am so sorry. Oh my God. I am so sorry for all the hard times I gave you. This, I see what you go through. Wow. Right? So my flesh was back. Yeah, nigga, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to oh tell y'all this joint is not easy. This, right. But the Holy Spirit said, don't do all that. Wow. Just say, forgiven. And I said, mm -hmm. it's all right, Tasha. You're good. Mm -hmm. Right? And we joke and laugh. Okay. Wednesday come. I think fast forward to. That was a Thursday. Mm -hmm. Saturday, I'm in the shower. And God tells me, text Tasha and see how she. Text Tasha and ask her how Stefan is doing. Mm -hmm. Text her. No response. I'm like, okay, maybe it's Saturday. She's like, oh, girl, leave me alone. It's Saturday. <laughs> it's I don't be bothered. Off. Right. I don't be bothered. But the rest of the day is just heavy on my heart. Mm -hmm. I text. I'm like, what the heck? Why she not responding? Mm -hmm. Why she not responding? Sunday come. I said, okay, maybe Sunday she's going to respond because it's closer to Monday. Mm -hmm. I get a call from a coworker. Brother Tasha died. <gasps> Jesus. I'm like, what? Who? Which one? The my Jesus, staff. Jesus, Berta. She said, "Oh no, she says no. Your staff, Tasha." Died. I said, "The one I was just talking to on Thursday." Oh my lord. And I, of course, I cried, right? Cried because I was just like, "What is putting this stones?" At the same time, and this don't take this wrong. At the same time, I felt relief mm. because when God told me to tell her about, tell him her about him, I did not know that was her last chance. Wow. Of receiving. Wow. Wow. Oh my gosh, I got goosebumps. Yo. So you don't, he knows the timing of everybody. Yes. So when he tells you, you can't say, oh, I don't want to be offensive. I don't want to hurt their feelings. I don't want to rub them the wrong way. Because you're quietly, and Jackie Hill Perry had said this in a song. It's like we're dancing on top of their grave because we don't want to offend them. Wow. Take offense. Don't be my friend. Like, be offensive. Be rub them the wrong way. Be considered rude, be considered an op, because you don't know. We never know. And then you're playing with people's forever. Right. Especially when we know the truth. Right. It really, it's actually pretty convicting right now. Um, like, just even in households. Yeah. Like if you're living with unbelievers, tell them about Jesus. Yeah. I don't care if you have to do it. Your coworkers, time. tell them about the love of the Lord. Regardless of where you are with Christ right now, the truth is still the truth. For me, the sky is still blue, even when right. people say it's purple. Right. Right. You can't negate fact the truth. Fact. Right. You feel me? It doesn't matter where you're on your walk. If you slipped yesterday, the truth is still the truth, and we it needs to come out. Yeah. Because the truth is the only thing that will set you free, and God is the truth, the life, and the way. Yeah. Wow. So that... Well, I guess we're having a house meeting. <laughs> <laughs> but that wow, was... Wow, that is huge. So after she passed, I asked God, I'm like... God, can you at least tell me, can, she, can you allow her, this is the difference, is who is your source? Mm. You know, people go to seers and do witchcraft to talk to the dead. Mm. I said, if you ask, mm. and if you feel like it is right, mm. he will allow you to for certain things. Mm. I asked, I said, God, can you 
can I talk to her and see what happened? Mm-hmm. How did she die? A month later, I had a dream. Mm-hmm. And in the dream, she sat me down the bed and explained to me exactly how she died. What she ate, what she drank. The, the, she was drinking a lot because the kids were home for, uh, uh, because of COVID. And mm-hmm. there was a lot of st- stress, right? So she, she was li- drinking a lot that night or just, just a lot mm-hmm. since we went on lockdown. I don't know if it's fear. I don't know, mm-hmm. right? And she broke it down, like, exactly what happened to her and how she died. And she literally took me to where she was. Oh, my God. Not hell, not heaven, but n- far from heaven. Wow. It's almost like she just, she going, she's going, she's going to the other place, but just waiting for the time, right? Oh, my God. So she was, like, standing behind a bush. Dead. That part right there, I just want to say one thing. Reading your word is going to be so important for the way that you view other people because this heaven and hell concept, this, the moment they die, they're in a better place. You're in a standstill and you will wake up to judgment or you will wake up to redemption. You're waking up to one of the two. Everybody's on pause. Once the trumpet sound, once the trumpet sounds, you know where you'll yeah, be found. That's exactly what it was, a pause. Right. Perfect word. Continue, continue. It was, well, it was a pause, and I asked her, so she was, like, standing behind this tree, this bush, more of like a tree, and she's standing there. I said, so what are you doing here? They have a, every, it's, it's just, it's never day. It's always dark, right? Mm. I said, what do you do here? She said, you know, I just try to mind my business. I looked to her, I said, what those, what they, they do witchcraft. It was like a pot with, like, some type of, cooking up some stuff, doing witchcraft, the other people, like, fighting, and and she just, I just, basically, she tried not to be just noticed, and she just tried to stay out the way. But if God is not coming for another thousand years, how, like, what? You know? So I'm like, I'm just like, yeah, I just, well, I just try to stay out the way and just mind my business and not get involved in any of that. Two months after, I have another dream. Maybe, like, a checkup. Mm-mm. Hey, so, Tosh, how you doing? Are you Okay. And I asked God, like, why I keep having dreams about her mm. and checking in on her? Mm-hmm. And I don't know, but it's almost like God was telling me, pray for her. I said, but she's gone already. It doesn't even mm-hmm. matter. I said, you know, I'm going to pray. Maybe she have another chance. Because remember, mm-hmm. when God comes, he gives you that last chance. Okay. After he comes and re- redeems mm. the believers, the the, uh, the time where, uh, if I'm calling Re- uh, Revelations, right, they, you're going to be here. You either take the, uh, the mark of the beast or you suffer until... Mm. God do the last round of like, oh, come on. Mm-hmm. I said, all right, I'm going to keep praying for her. Because if you keep making check in on her, maybe she has, mm. you know, but all to say wow. that wow. if God is telling you, to, that's what some, a lot of times, and these conversations are uncomfortable. I have a, you know, there's somebody that I know. Well, who I'm is, so convicted right now. Go yeah. Ahead. But somebody I know who is um, gay and mm. loves God and talk knows scripture. I'm just like, what are you no, doing? I'm sorry. That, that. What are you doing? But then, was it a very uncomfortable conversation to have? Yes. yes. Did I want to have it? Friends. No. But so many people unfollow me, girl, and I'm. It's fine. I'm fine now. Like there was mm. at, at that when that happened, I was like, okay, like I'm. There's no um, disdain or I'm mad. How could you? I thought he was homie. No, this this that is all gone mm-hmm. because now I was able to identify what is actually going on. Like mm. this this wasn't like oh I've been gay my whole life. Like that's not what this was. Mm. Um, but I'm serious, but go ahead with what you were saying with your friend. No, also, it was a, it was a really tough conversation for him to have. I just yeah. kind of felt that God was telling me, we need to talk about this. What yeah. are you doing? And I'm not saying that my thing was like, and he gave me, gave me a heart for it because I understand the temptation. I know what mm-hmm. Satan uses to get you, you know, trauma, mm-hmm. uh, 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 fear. Okay. Whatever. Mm-hmm. But I'm just like, so I was supposed to be like, yo, you gonna... Mm-hmm. I know, and the things that I feel like sometimes believers, we just think that we always think, oh, people just want to be lustful and just sleep with everybody. Yes, that's the case for some people. Mm-hmm. Some people, this is the spirit that they were given. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Some people have the spirit of anger. Mm-hmm. We're born to a word of sin. Some people have the spirit of anger, mm-hmm. and that is just, that is hard. that's hard mm-hmm. to be attracted to the same sex. And even sometimes, and I met people. I worked in fashion for years. I met people who were gay that did not want to be gay. They want the traditional marriage and all that wow. stuff. But that spirit calls them to the end. It's a hard anger. I could go get some counseling, really mm-hmm. get my life together, and get rid of that. I mean, through Christ, obviously, mm-hmm. and settle that. But that feeling is still there, even after 
even Jackie Hill talked about it. After you marry and all that stuff, that you're dying to yourself every day. Yeah, that emotion like, is still there. Sometimes yeah. it pops up. Sometimes you get what I'm saying. Yeah. So it's like you have to. Even with me, and I'm be really honest. Like sometimes Satan, he don't do it often, but sometimes like, oh, look at that girl, she cute. I said, come on, Satan, mm-hmm. try a new trick. You know, mm-hmm. but it's like he uses it. You know what I'm trying to say? So that is a heart, and that's I feel like sometimes as believers, because it is a touchy topic, we don't have a full understanding of I the mean, struggle. It's, a, it's only touchy because a lot of people haven't experienced it, or there's this tabooism over it. Like, ew, you know, mm-hmm. like just culturally, it's like, oh, it's nasty, it's dirty, and all this stuff. But it's because they exalt it to the as the highest of sins because of an unfamiliarity. Like mm-hmm. sin is sin, period. Right. Like it's there's no the only the worst sin is blasphemy the Holy Spirit. That's mm-hmm. it. Worst one. You know? Um but that is it's I don't I don't feel like it's an unfamiliar topic or not or an uncomfortable topic, especially for me. I just think that sometimes because the way my heart is set up, I'm always trying to to make sure people do feel understood, mm-hmm. even in their wrong. Yeah. Like you're wrong, and here's why. But I understand why you feel. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it makes it hard sometimes, because at the end of the day, I'm not accountable for everybody. Right. I know that I can no longer do that again, and I never will in yeah. Jesus' name. Yeah. At the same time, it's like if I still have a few, very few friends. I have a really close friend that she's about to get married to her girlfriend in a few mm-hmm. months. Are you going? No. Okay, good. I'll I already told her I'm not going. Yeah. Um, but like. And that was hard, yeah, <laughs> you I know? know. And her parents are just like treating her like trash because the Bible says blah 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 blah. And I'm like, you still gotta love this. You still gotta love these people. You know They're what I mean? They're humans. Like, like and, and and I feel like because you know, also what makes it the misunderstanding comes from, mm-hmm. we kind of separate the two. But if you want to get back to the root, if mm-hmm. you look at the root of this issue, it's not about being gay or straight because yeah. you could be straight and sleep with Tom, Dick, and Harry, yeah. or sleep with all the girls in the. Even trying to. The root of this is lust. Personally, mm-hmm. the root was lust. That's usually it. The root has been lust for me since I was eight years old. Mm-hmm. I wasn't taken advantage of. I ain't seen nothing crazy. No one mm-hmm. took, there was no trauma. I was like, this looks fun. Why can't I do this? Mm-hmm. Pentecostal church, skirts, you know, no makeup, all this stuff. And I was like, I that's just what happens with religion. Everybody. I just wanted, I just want to do this with everybody. And that's what I did. Like, I was like, it, and it wasn't even like a, um, a, uh, because that's the thing. The first, the first time it happened, before it even happened, I actually fell in love with a girl and I was like, this is wild. Like, mm. why is everyone saying this is bad? You know what mm. I mean? Um, but that's the thing with sin. Like you, you get so close and so far down. You're like, this is great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then you see how far you are from the Lord. So the and then the thing starts sipping in. What was I going to tell you? Um, oh, this happened January of last year, 2023. I was still living in my own, old apartment, right? Mm-hmm. And this was technically one of the last times that I like was excited to smoke weed, right? Mm-hmm. So I had a long day at work. I remember it was pouring rain outside, like pouring rain. I was living alone in my own studio apartment, mm-hmm. and I had a little clip. In New York? Oh, you was doing it. Oh. I barely, I was not paying that rent. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that rent was crazy. But um, <laughs> I got home and I was like, you know what? I'm going to smoke this. I'm going to smoke this joint. So I took the joint. I went outside in the rain, sitting in the, on the like stoop. I was smoking it. Mm-hmm. And then I went back upstairs and I had my cat, Honey. I love you, Honey. Shout out. You um, anyway, Honey is still alive? Honey is, yeah, she's at home. Okay. <laughs> um, it's <I'm> still alive. <laughs> I came home and I walked into my apartment and it didn't feel like my apartment. I was like, mm. somebody's in here. Mm. Like, and it wasn't like, oh, a human person in here. It was just like, no, there's a dominion in this house. Oh, shoot. It was terrible. I have not experienced a fear like that in my life. Wow. So I'm spooked out. Like, oh, the, um, yeah, the paranoia just like set in, right? And I was like, okay, maybe, maybe it's just the weed. Maybe it's just the weed. So I go and I sit on my couch, and then my window is cra- slightly cracked open a little bit. And I, honey's just like sitting on my bed, but she's like standing up and she's like looking around all weird. Oh, shoot. And I was like, Mm-mm. I'm high. I'm scared. Oh, so you extra bugged out. Extra bugged oh, you out. You extra bugged out. And I'm just like looking. Then I start, when I tell you the thoughts was crazy, I'm looking. I had a lot of like mirrors or like reflective things mm-hmm. in my apartment. I had this like partition with glass. Mm-hmm. And for some, I don't, it had to be a demon because I don't think this is information the Holy Spirit would give. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not necessarily evil information, but you know how when, in, I think it's in Genesis when the fallen angels was giving them like ancient arts and ancient mag- mm-hmm. magics and stuff. It was mm-hmm. like that. The information popped into my mind 
that all of these mirrors and windows and reflective objects in your room are making pathways for spirits from different oh. realms. And I started tracing all of these lines in my, it's so weird, girl. It's like so you weird. physically traced it? No, like in my, like I can yeah, I, see, like I didn't see actual figures, but I can see their, where they were traveling from. Wow. And then I realized that's why this is, my whole apartment doesn't feel like my own right now. Like mm -hmm. it's almost like I walked into the realm, the spirit realm of my apartment and it oh, was wow. filled with demons, filled with demons, wow. right? The room I told you the window was cracked in mm -hmm. my room, um, well in this apartment. I'm sitting on the couch, the window's right there. And I was like, I gotta leave. Right. <laughs> the apartment, I should jump from the window. Oh. Mm. I live on the fourth floor. I never told you this. Right? <laughs> Yo, this why I can't be on camera. camera. <laughs> <laughs> um, Listen, and when Jessica's mom is on the floor. When I tell you the fear, the fear was crazy. Like, and I'm just like, I gotta leave. Like, I can't be in this, I can't be in my apartment. I'm scared. Yeah. There's spirits in here, whatever. Honey's freaking out. My body is frozen like a rock. Like, wow. a rock. Like, I can't move. I'm terrified. And then I remember, right? And this is January 2023. I remember oh, yeah. Jesus. Yes. Right? Hey, there's a guy girl, named Jesus. <laughs> girl, so I, this is the sad part. This is the sad part. I'm like, Jesus, saying to him, I was like, Jesus, Lord, like, help me, help me. The devil's like, he doesn't know you. You haven't spoken to him. You don't go to church. You don't wow. pray. Why are you calling him for? Like you don't. You don't even know him. He's an accuser. Of course, he's gonna. Say Girl, that. when I tell you that's when it hit, I was like, I'm scared. I could cry right now. I'm like, when I tell you, is everything's. I was like, when you call on Jesus and you and you and the the devil tells you he's not even there because he's so he's involved everywhere. in your life. Yeah. Like, I mean, he's everywhere. Yes, yeah. but in that moment. Girl, yeah. I was still sleeping around. Like I was not even, I'm calling Jesus because that's what my mom told me to do when I was little. Yeah. This is not like I had a relationship with him yeah. at all. Right. Like I didn't, it's, I did not have a relationship yeah. with him. And how dare I at that moment was like, you know, Jesus help me, like there's demons. And the devil's like, you don't even know him. Mm. Like he's not gonna help you right, right now. That then is said in scary. Mm. Then my mind started to, when I now you don't know. Now, cause then I believed it. That's mm. the, I believed it immediately. Yeah, that's what saying does. I was like, you're right. I have yeah. no hope. Yeah. That feeling of having no hope, I wish that on no one. I, f I heard that this is what hell, hell actually is, not That's the place. what it felt like. Mm. That's what it felt like. And I was, I remember I, my, the only two people that know this story is the two people that I called. Well, was about, well, one of them was the first person I was like, I should call my mom. But her and I didn't have a great relationship at the time mm. and I was too scared. I didn't even call her. Mm. So I called Tayo. You know Tayo? Yeah, I know Tayo. I called Tayo and I was like, Tayo, like, crying, hyperventilating. She's like, breathe, <laughs> breathe. Okay. What's going on? I'm trying to walk her through the steps. Like I smoke some weed. I think I'm gonna jump out the window. Blah, blah. Yeah. And she was just really like, so, so, so helpful. Right. Like she Amen. was just like, first, shout out, to feel, shout out to you, Tayo. She was like, you're here. You're on the couch, feel your toes. Do you feel mm -hmm. your toes moving? Okay. Like walking me through just being back in my body. Cause mm -hmm. my mind was just like, bugging out. Bugging out. Wow. And then she prayed with me and things yeah. got a lot better the rest of that night. But I've never like, when I tell you that's the spirit of people that, that, that choose to unalive themselves, mm -hmm. like it's really far from your own will. Like it's yeah. just like an attack. That's really an attack and you believe it. Like, yeah. um, and yeah, after that was January, 2023, the next six months was when my journey for truth started. It wasn't journeying through the Bible. It was just journey for truth. Like I was like, because think about it, even in that moment, I'm seeing all these lines and portals and thinking that mm. there's a realm here and all this stuff. And I'm just like, well, I don't hear nothing about portals in the Bible. Maybe mm. what, what does the Egyptian book of the dead have to say about that? Wow. What does all so these other, so I started searching like crazy, wow. looking for identity. Like it was this whole. I switched after he told you. You don't even know. Right. Oh my God. And I believe, I really believed it in that moment. Like. I think also But it was the, the things that he take truth and twist it. Mm -hmm. It was true, but then you're never too far for God. Mm -hmm. That's the part he didn't add. add. Okay, that's what he does. Yep. Yep. Because you're right, because even the Bible says when the time comes, you're like, oh, but Jesus, I did this for the church, did that. God yep. said, I don't even Works. know you. I don't know you. So there was truth. Yes. However, yes. he didn't give you the... Yes. He, he, he leaves us. So that's what saying does. Right. He takes truth and twist it. Right. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, you don't have to apologize. Um... 
so from th those next six months, it was January to June, July. July first is when God met me in a crazy way, and have oh. shout out to Angelica Mercedes Lay. Who's in the couch <laughs> looking <laughs> like she about to get a painting done of her? <laughs> 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 nah, because no cap, like even in life, Ange has been with me every step of the way and mm -hmm. has never shunned me and has never shunned me from the grace and love of God, has mm -hmm. always spoke truth into my life. Mm -hmm. Even when we were in two different spiritual places, like she'd be like, nigga, listen. <laughs> I love it. Like, this is what's people. good. Like, and right. I thank God because even after Just keep that. It a stack. Yeah, keep it in a stack. Like, I really feel like after the same sex relationship with my, my ex girlfriend, like, how long have you gone for? Two and a half years. Wow. Um, after that, I was still, I remember I shaved my head. I was like, I'm getting all the girls I want. And I was just doing that. I wasn't even committed to a mm. relationship. I was just like, whatever, I'm gay now. I'm gonna just do whatever I want to do. Mm. Um, but even in that in that season, I think that that relationship had me really tied to that person. Absolutely. I didn't even look for so, anybody so. else. No yeah. friends, no, like the only reason why Nichelle could speak into me all the time is because we lived together. Mm. I made time for nobody else. Mm. So when I w got out of that relationship, like Ange was around, um, homegirl Alex was around, like there was some Tayo, Evie, mm. like people were still like, okay, Faith, like we see you outside, but we still gonna invite you. Right. <laughs> to like, things. you don't, people, I, just to button, you don't understand. What, what's the Bible say? Mm. Uh, with the love, with the love draws you near. I forget what the Bible says, but it's basically when you show people love, that's what draws you close. You mm -hmm. get what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. you cannot deny the authentic love that people show you. Yeah. And then you, I, just as believers, you don't understand how much just loving people, even through their nonsense, mm -hmm. yeah. will bring them back. That's something yeah. that, say, what's saying, you can't steal that from you. Yeah. When yeah. you gonna say, oh, did they really, really love you? They showed me. Right. What that's are you talking true. about here? That is true. Go ahead. That's true. Um, but yeah, so in those six months, January to like June-ish, like I was still outside, but I was aware of a different realm. Yeah. Like I was aware that this ain't reality actually. Yeah. So I was oh, still- Oh, join this fake. I was still, like it really is. It really is. And me and Damon so talk about this all the time. in the Matrix. Me and, me and Damon talk about this all, is this whole join this fake? It's, and it's so sad cause it's like, if you're not looking up, like it's just so easy to just get lost, get lost yo. Especially in the city. Cause Definitely a lot of stuff is man made. Damon yeah. told me like in the South, it's so much easier to be connected because there are not a lot of tall buildings. Mm -hmm. So a lot of man-made stuff is not in the way. Mm -hmm. All you got is God-made things. You can't right. say, you cannot, like, come on. We got me. <laughs> but, um, right yeah, so it was just like this truth-seeking thing. And because of deeply seated, deeply rooted lusts in life, a lot of those truths were found in relationship with other people. Mm. Like I would want to date people that were just very different from me. Mm. Oh, okay, like you you worship Baal, tell me more. Like oh, wow. you are, you're into Oshun and Yoruba stuff, mm. tell me more. Just picking like, them spirits. Yes, yes. And it's like, I didn't even know at that time that it was wrong, because it didn't feel wrong, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, it was so alluring. Like, mm. interesting, like this mysticism. Oh my gosh, Christian mysticism could go <laughs> right. out Boring. the door. Bye. Ridiculous. It's all ridiculous. Mm. Um, like, you just need to read your Bible. I'm sorry. Like, I know it sounds so old school, but people just need to read their words. You see what her parents said, what they said. Yeah, I get it now. Like, I really do. Um, but it was just this search for truth. Um, and I've told the story a million times now. It's been maybe eight months to the day now. Well, publicly, because I got baptized in December, but from what happened was God met me in July. September was when I think I started being like, okay, no, I'm sure, sure, sure of this. But then like the guilt and shame of my whole life, of my course, whole life, the past seven that. years of nonsense was like, I finally felt the sin. Mm. I would say that I finally felt it. And I was like, I don't want to talk to nobody. I'm unfollowing everybody on Instagram. I'm going to be in my room all day, weeping, weeping, weeping. Yeah, which is also God, not I'm sorry. Good. Like, huh? Which is also not good, because it's saying love isolation. Yes. He loves isolation. I was questioning salvation. I mean, you remember that one Sunday at Epiphany, and I was like, I don't, even, I don't deserve this. Like, yeah. I don't deserve God's love. And I, I do think all of those points were necessary, though, because I think that's the process of knowing God. It's like knowing why you need him. Yeah. You know? Um, right, if because if you be taking from granted, like, oh, you, you take it for granted. It, you like, be, the amount of times I said that salvation's prayer, blah 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 blah. I didn't even mean it because I didn't know the weight of sin. Yeah, you know, I didn't know that. And he allowed you to feel he it. He allowed me to feel it, yo. He really did. 
So um, imagine Jesus feeling all of everybody's sin. For all of time? Oh, Thank you, Lord. Okay. Oh my gosh! No, the, no wonder why oh he said, "Please gosh. take this and cup never, from me." And never sin, sin. and never sin. And oh, no wonder gosh. why he said, oh, "Please take." Please, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and y'all here doing her right? Thing. She an all black work. too. It's <laughs> giving, it's giving project manager like. Yes. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. <laughs> right, yo. I no wonder why saying. he said, "Take this cup." He was sweating blood. Imagine. Oh, thank God. you. Sweating blood. Like. Yo, and that's just from a few, it's not even like I was, I was harming people. Like I was really harming myself, you know, my own body, my mind, my heart for sure. But it just hit way different from September to about like November, mm. November, that November, this past November, I'm talking three months ago. Yeah, in November, so I became a, a, a member of Epiphany. December, I got baptized. A month after that which is literally now mid January mm. start now the test. All we got all the tests right, right now. You, you went through the Let me went, see if you <laughs> Yeah, you went through the baby phase. <laughs> you got the milk. It's just yeah, the meat. Yo, okay? That's for real. Um 2020, mm-hmm. right? This is everything that I'm telling you like that that frozen moment where you don't even know Jesus happened in 2023, the beginning of January 2023. Mm-hmm. Rewind 3 years prior. Beginning of January 2020, I was in a poly relationship with three women. Wow. Outside, I was DJing. Oh, you was outside, outside. Yes, I was DJing, mm-hmm. and I was DJing for this group. Um, I'm actually I'm cool with one of them right now, but still, but this group of friends called Coven House, mm-hmm. literally witch witch house. I was DJing with them. We were throwing these underground lesbian parties, Brooklyn, with all this stuff. And the things that you take you deep, and probably elevate you, make you feel like, oh yeah, I made it. Yeah, it's actually very sad. Um, COVID hit, right? And, you know, Michelle, I love you so much, sis. Um, because even through all of this, she was still my friend. Wow. Like, she was just like, yeah. you are in sin, and I'm going to stick beside you, and I'm going to pray with you. We need that, Like, yes. I'm not going to scorn you. I'm not going to stop talking to you. Wow. Like, um, Don't cut your friends off if they're in sin. No, still hold them down. Still pray for them. Right. Still love yeah. them through it. Right. Still tell them that you love them. You don't have to Send go them to the party. She still. never pull up to any of those parties right, with me. She shouldn't. She was never outside with me, but when what I came this home. This cutoff culture is toxic, bro. Cancel culture is in the church. I don't it's like in the church. that. Oh, shit, I don't do that. But then, because Jesus definitely sat with Judas, know what Judas was going to do. do. Wow, yeah. And still love them. Right. Yep. Um, but in 2020, you know, we all by ourselves. We're all in isolation by choice. Not by choice now. Mm-hmm. Um, and I started to lose all of the fabricated identity that I made. Mm. A lesbian, I'm a DJ, I like, I'm a cool person, I, I have these, these are my friends, these like makeshift friends that have been for like a year and a half now. Mm. Some of them I slept with, I don't know what's going on. Mm. Like, just all the, the the identity that I built started to melt mm. in solitude. Mm. And I started to crumble and I was like, I don't even know who I am anymore. Mm. Like. There's nobody around me to tell me who I am because I was a part of this group. I was a part of this relationship. Everyone's label of who I was became what my identity was. Mm. So now there's no one there. Yeah. I, blank. It's just you. Yeah. Blank. Um, and I remembered, you know, the foundation. This is why the Bible says to train up a child in the way that they should go. Mm, that part. Okay. That part. Mommy, if you see this, I love you. You might be mad at me, but I love you. And I love you too, daddy. Um, <laughs> but both of my parents are Christian. Mm-hmm. They have their the way they live their lives and mm-hmm. their things. But they're also human. Mm-hmm, but they right. they raised me to read your word mm-hmm. and to pray and to fast. Mm-hmm. And in 2020, I was like, okay, like the Bible does say that God knows the number of hairs on my head. Mm-hmm. God did create me. Mm-hmm. He also created my purpose and who I am yeah. and my identity. So God, if you're real. I believe you're real. I haven't had any real encounter with you though. And I'm mm. 20, I was like 27, 28 at that mm-hmm. time. If you're real, I need you to tell me who mm. I am. Yeah. I said that prayer in tears, heard nothing mm-hmm. for three years. Wow. Okay. That was 2020. Heard nothing. Um, shortly after I prayed that, I started painting. Yo, first of all, dumb <laughs> niggas. Okay. <laughs> Be painting. Okay, before she go into that, y'all, y'all, they got the cheat code. 
they got <laughs> God. They got a cheat code. They be painting. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> she was like, cut to commercial. I, I, I just wanted to let me know. <laughs> um, but I started painting mainly because it was like an escape too. Yeah. Um, but everyone, you know, Clubhouse, Instagram, everyone oh, yeah. baking banana bread, painting. <laughs> like, it was just, everyone did I didn't, I didn't have things. social media. You didn't I was off. I had no social. Because it was Girl. Just I didn't know what was going on. Not a banana bread. Banana bread recipes were on deck. <laughs> Everyone's making bread. You know what's beautiful about the bread is because the Lord. And I'm like, everyone making bread? Really? Stop like, it. It's beautiful. I'm Grassroots. Right now. <laughs> Grassroots. It was beautiful to see. Wow, okay. But I started painting and COVID Y'all make the bread, I paint. <laughs> I hear that. Um, COVID doors opened summer of 2020 and I was like, well, I guess I'm outside. <laughs> Went right okay. back on the apps, whatever, whatever, do my thing. Wow. Um, and I was still painting though. Mm-hmm. And there's about six pa- paintings that Wait, I painted. Question, before yeah. we go into that. Mm-hmm. Do you feel a way when God didn't reply to you? Just, okay, he's not real. I'm doing whatever I'm going to do. No, because I it's, in a weird way, I didn't expect him to. Oh, so you didn't have the faith. Probably that's why I didn't, didn't come. Have the faith. Well, it did. It that answer came. Okay. Um, yeah. I just prayed it in desperation for sure. Like I was like a, a cry out. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm done. Okay. And leave the throne. Like that's what it was. Okay. Like it's not okay. I'm praying for you and I'm gonna wait for you to answer it because I didn't feel like I wasn't sure how. I never heard his voice before. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that relationship really looks like. Gotcha. You know. Okay. Um, but yeah. So. 2021, I, w- I painted a few pieces, but it was more so painting for fun, for mm-hmm. sure. Then there was one piece called Many Are Called. That was the first painting that I made from scripture. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that verse always scared me so much when mm-hmm. I was little. Many are called, but few are chosen yeah. for those that hear the word of the Lord. Mm-hmm. Like, I was like, man, I want to paint a picture about this. So I mm-hmm. painted that painting. So much clicked in that painting that I was like, I should paint from the verses that scared me a lot. Mm. when I was little because it was, there's a lot of trauma there that I didn't realize. Mm-hmm. Like the fear of the Lord was too much for me, gotcha. you know? So I started painting from that. So I was painting all these pictures, painted this painting of Jonah. I painted this one painting girl. I was dating this guy. Had a, he had a schizophrenic episode in front of me. He said he saw me get killed at the witch trials. It oh. was a lot. I got so scared. I told him to leave my apartment and I started painting right after. Like he left, I put, the, put paint on a... On a piece wow. of paper, and I painted this piece called Reverence, and it was just a soul bowing and worshiping God. But like, it was like the soul was like emaciated, it was so skinny because it was just so scared, and oh it just God. was like in awe of God because it mm. didn't deserve anything, anyway. So, I'm painting all these things, but painting from fear, right? Mm. Okay, fast forward, fast forward, fast forward. I paint all these books about six or seven pieces. Um, fast forward 2023, right? That moment happens. I don't have a relationship with the Lord. I'm seeking for truth, blah, 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 blah. Six months go in, I'm dating all these people, whatever. At the time I was dating this one guy, nameless for now, um, but he was a painter. And we went to his show and me me and Ange went to the show. <laughs> and we go to the show and it was a great show. It was a good show, nice art show, whatever. Um, we get back on the train and Ange is like, Bro, you know how Angie's talking. Uh-huh. <laughs> she's like, no. she's like, yo, you know what's crazy, bro? Like, so many people say they hear the voice of God and they paint and make all this stuff from the voice of God, but when you see the work, you don't feel His presence at all. Uh-huh. This nigga says that and knocks out. <laughs> That's it. Just, she says it on bomb the train. Like she drops a bomb and, and it's like, <laughs> like. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was tired. And you know how free wine be at. <laughs> <laughs> the wine be flowing at these art free. openings. It's always better when it's free. free. It's always better. It's, it's better free, when it's free. It's for me. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Please put that in the clip, all Please right? Please put that in the clip. What? But she was wide awake when she said that statement. This wasn't a that delirious was like, statement. Okay, you're done now. Go get your rest. rest. <laughs> Go get your rest. That's what I need you for. She says that, bro. As soon as the words leave her lips and her neck cocks back like that. Imagine immediately bro audibly audibly this is not information like i told you at the time in my room and when yeah. i heard information no this is an audible voice yeah you asked me who you were in 2020 what your identity was in me i've answered you with every title of every painting you've made since then pull out your phone like clear step one step two step three pull out your phone write out every title every title that i've made were scripture full scripture wow. many are called jonah reverence um the, the passage in James 5 about being double-minded. Um, everything has been clear. And it was like a click. Wow. Like, it was like a click. Your identity 
it's in me and it's in my word. If you want to know who you, you are, are, read my word. Period. Yeah. Bro, I'm shaking Ange. Yeah. <laughs> Nigga, wake up! Wake up! <laughs> Nigga, Don't, like, get the wine out your system. Come on. <laughs> Stuff is happening. Like the Lord just told me who I was, bro, and what you just said. And, and so you remember, I'm looking at you, and I'm just like, look, and you're like, yeah, like, <laughs> Yo, yeah, yeah, God, God is good. Like, Amen. God is good. Oh, can I go back to sleep now? Uh, come on. Yeah. <laughs> but it was like that whole search it means for so truth. Much to you. All of those months before that, searching for truth and all this stuff, still painting, still doing all this stuff. I was like, this has been the truth the whole time. Damn. That's been the truth. That's why art is so important to me now. Yeah. That's why I'm painting. Especially if that's Bro. the avenue. Because we all have our purpose. Our purpose mm -hmm. is to spread the good news. For sure. But he used a different avenue. If that's your avenue, you got to hold strong to that. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. But after that, after that, I was like, it's thing, it was it was like light at lightning after that. Because that, that was July 1st. I would never forget. My birthday mm -hmm. was July 3rd. That whole week, oh, that was... <laughs> um, the that that guy that I was dating, mm. the whole thing that we were the situation we was in completely switched up. Like mm. that whole week, God was like purge, 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 purge. purge we purge. clipping everything in life. Okay, it clipped. Um, two months prior to that in April, mind you, I was not even I didn't hear the voice of the Lord. I wasn't even Christian at that time, mm. say, taking it seriously enough. I didn't know God. I thought I did. Mm -hmm. I like um, I remember seeing Jackie Hill saying like, "Yo, I'm doing the Glory Conference. This is gonna be the last year I'm doing it. So mm -hmm. if y'all wanna come, get your tickets." I asked all the homies, "Y'all trying to come to Dallas for me for Glory?" I don't know. The fund's not funding. And I was like, "Okay, mm -hmm. I'm gonna buy this ticket. I'm probably not gonna even make it, but I'm gonna buy the ticket regardless." Mm -hmm. Then that happened in July, and I was like, "I'm going to Glory. Mm -hmm. I forgot I'm going to Glory in September. Like oh, wow. now I have like there's something for me to go to to right. learn more. You right. know? So yeah, that and then from then it's just been, Lord, I want to know all." that there is about you. Yeah. Like for real. I want to know all I'm that there is now. about you. I'm like, so hungry now. Yeah. Like it's just truth and it's not confusing. <laughs> yeah. It's just so clear. And everything else like there hasn't been any other even other relationships cuz cuz you know the, the last relationship I was in wasn't with someone that was same sex but also like gender stuff. Mm -hmm. Like it was just it's been so confusing. All mm -hmm. my whole dating saga of life has mm. always been confusing like the mo the clearest relationship that i've ever been in is my relationship with jesus amen like it's been so direct amen there's no questions because he's not trying to gaslight you yes he's not it's fronting like, it is what it is and i just don't want oh man i just don't i wish people knew that yeah and i'm grateful to my parents for sure to bringing me up in that way and this is not a oh well i'm doing what my parents told me to do like no this is new I thought I knew God, and that's that's why I said I had a heart for people that are in the, were in the church and left, because like I I understand why people leave, because yeah. God is there is the people there to them. Yeah, you know, you yeah. get hurt by the yeah. people. Of course, you don't want to fellowship with them no more, but that's not who God is. Yeah, yeah. I remember I made a I made a post years ago because people were like I was always got something negative to say about Jesus. I'm like. What, what did Jesus? I was like, did I really post it? I, I was really waiting. I said, what did Jesus do to you? I mean, Yo. what did Jesus do to you? Tell me what Jesus did to you mm -hmm. without mentioning a person. Mm -hmm. Do you know not a single person was able to reply wow. to that message? Right. Because wow. you can't. Yeah. You cannot. Because Jesus did blemish. nothing to you. Yeah. Not a blemish on him. Okay. He wow. did nothing to you. And that's the thing, too. Even in that truth seeking thing, right? People love to say, oh, it's just a hoax. Oh, religion. It's just a plan. There are historical. Documents no, talk about it, outside of the Bible. I'm tired. Jesus was written more about through, outside of the Bible, outside of the Gospels. Jesus was written more about at that time than the actual emperor of that time. And that's what he meant. Like, like Man. it's just so there's so much information. Like this person not only existed, but mm. everything that he did was true. It has never been repeated. Mm -hmm. Like, and if. If Jesus was real and what he did was true, mm -hmm. outside of the Bible, if you're going to say that is fact, right? then you read in the Bible that this man says, I am God. Mm -hmm. And then you read 600 years before that, someone, like the whole, the Old Testament is so fire. So, thank you. I've been trying to tell people, people, okay. Also, I have, I got work at four. Yeah, that's fine. We can wrap it up soon. Okay, I know. <laughs> oh, you have to no, like, you're you're late. Late. I'm going, I'm not late. going home. Okay, okay. 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 That's fine. It's right there. That's right. That's right. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I want you to get into it. Like we could do a part two. But oh, like, absolutely. It's just to me, it's 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 foolishness and it's deception if you don't 
believe that Jesus was just a real human being. Let's like start there. Like, yeah. he's real. He existed. There, there are Historical facts. facts. That like, says that he's real. And the whole, the story of the whole gospel doesn't even start in Matthew. Like, there's just, there's so much now that I, you know what? I just don't want to, I want to talk, not, I can't do it now. But just the, the gospel is such a beautiful story. Yeah. And if people could just open their ears to hear it. And your hearts to receive it. Like, your yeah. life would legit change. Yo, it's peace over here, I'm telling you. It's peace over here. It's so... Ain't no peace out there. Ain't, ain't no, no peace. peace out there. Oh, my gosh. And it's so sad because, you like, we know those people. Yeah, yeah. That's you what, know, and I'm like, And you just dang. hope that they will come. But, you know... Um, oh, man. We might do a part two. <laughs> Yo, we're going to do a part two, and when we do, I'm going to pull up. Yes! I'm gonna, pull I'll up. come on screen this time. <laughs> So I got one, I got a verse that this week God kind of put on my heart when mm. it was just, you know, a verse that just stood out to me. I want to see what it means to you. Mm. Therefore, grip up the loins of your mind, be sober and rest your hopefully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to former lusts mm -hmm. as in your ignorance. Mm -hmm. So lusts. As obedient children, actually, I want to pull it up on my phone. If that's mm -hmm. okay. You said first yes, Peter. Oh, I'm oh, sorry, y'all. Grid up the lines of obedient children, not conforming yourself to the former lust, the former lust mm -hmm. as in your ignorance. Okay. Okay. So, the revelation of Jesus Christ has us as children, mm -hmm. right? So when we, when that that revelation that I had, humbled me and also brought me down to being a child again, mm -hmm. like. You know that first time when you saw Zion and he's like, this is my mother. Mm -hmm. Like that type of revelation. If you're going to be an obedient child, mm -hmm. when you're born again, you're not going to conform to the former lusts of life. Yeah. You know? And those former lusts are going to come up. Yeah. But those lusts were there because of your ignorance. You didn't yeah. know who your daddy right. was. <laughs> you didn't know who your daddy right. was. You know? So you're, the, that lust is drawing you to all these different types of people. I'm, can I get excited? I salivate. <laughs> like, <laughs> let me <swallow. laughs> Babe, you're funny. <laughs> I said, but because there's there's more there's more to this verse. But yeah. that's why I, oh the Bible is so beautiful. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind and be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is brought to you. When you are born again and you are now a child of God, you have to be obedient to his father dumb. You know, you have to be obedient to his instructions because right. it's easier to get brought up back to the former lust yeah. of your life. Especially living in this world of sin. It's this, everywhere. It's, this is Satan's realm, basically. It's everywhere. You're stuck. Um, as in your ignorance. But as he but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy, holy. in all your conduct. Holiness, I was raised in a Pentecostal church, but holiness is in. <laughs> like, this, there's... It's holiness or or hell. It really is. Like I know yeah. that sounds wild. There's no in between. There is really no in between. You just, and don't get me wrong. Other. Like I'm not here wearing skirts and no makeup and all that stuff. This is a sanctification process process for the rest of your life. Yeah. Okay. Like yeah. you don't just turn around and be holy. That's why people yeah. in long skirts and tights and all this stuff. That's, that's not holiness. Physical. Right. That's, that's just for physical. the that's for the just other people modesty. to look so at. Say the, oh wow. Right. Yeah. Right. Modesty. Right. And I mean modesty is amazing it's too. Great. It yeah. is. That's important. But when you dress up yourself like that, it's for other people to think you are holy. It's right. not, the Lord knows your heart right. and your mind. It I mean, starts there. Um, why am I looking to the camera so intensely? Um, because you're serious. Like, <laughs> because it's it me. Is. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, um, it. Because it is written, be holy for I am holy. I, when that happens, I would love to know where this is from. I bet you it's in Isaiah or something crazy. Um, but if you call him, okay, I'm, I'm just going to stop reading. But, um, <laughs> she's like, wait, hold on. <laughs> Chapter 20. Hold on. But yeah, it's yeah. just, it's, it's just a new life. Yeah. It's a new life. I can confidently say that even now in my current life, I'm still tempted. Yeah. Because I lived a wild life yeah. before this. You yeah. know, this is, it hasn't even been a year yet mm, in being born fresh. again. Like, yeah. it's still very fresh. So the devil knows that. The devil knows your type. The devil knows what you like. Mm -hmm. Like, he knows what works, what your pattern is. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. he can't create he has nothing. A whole, that's what God said. Don't leave the devil a full hole for this devil. Yes. He got, like that testimony from the guy. He's like, they went and got. Binders on these people's lives. I'm oh, saying this. Yeah. Had the binders of each member's lives, generations past. What runs in the family? What mm. issues? And that's how they got them. Mm. That's what. And, and the, watching that testimony, 
that's why you gotta read the word because literally mm -hmm. it is a blueprint to life we've never lived this before the one mm -hmm. who created it is telling you how to live right, it so right. you skipping that good yeah. luck it's like somebody give you a freaking vacuum and you never read the manual how you, Yo. gonna, you, you know what i'm saying so it's like where he's I said, oh that's what god said don't leave a foothold for satan i'll give you one i know you gotta go but i'll give you one mm -hmm. my old job we had a program called footholds mm -hmm. and the footholds every every all the clients are in there you know they're social where they were born, their birth certificate, mm. what kind of pregnancy the mother had, literally all the whole called life. Foothold? It's called foothold. That's kind of crazy. That's kind of crazy. It wow. didn't click until Ooh, just years <laughs> later. No, until y'all said, wow. oh, shoot. Literally. So when God said, don't leave a foothold for Satan, wow. don't give your whole life to Satan, yes. like here. Of course, he will know how to attack yes. you. Yes. He got a whole binder, a whole encyclopedia. And you of out here thinking, we, not even you, we, myself, I speak for myself first, thinking that we got it under control. Yeah, right. I know I don't. Like, I got self control. The Holy Spirit's with me. I can figure it out. I sure don't <laughs> cursing people out sometimes. I ain't got no self control. I we did not. I, a week ago, I was struggling. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, I admit it. The demon succeeded. <laughs> that was like, you, you think I don't know you? Yeah. Like, but the different the difference is now we have tools. We have our word, we have prayer, we have fasting, we know yeah. what to go to now. There's yeah. no hopelessness. Yeah. I gotta go to work and serve wait tables. That's right. So guys, we're gonna do a part two because this is good. Part two. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um <laughs> this was heavy, okay? But I hope you guys enjoyed, take something from it, share verses or what mm -hmm. stuck out to you. You're going to have faith back, okay? And Angelica does. And Angelica! Us. She's going to be here. Oh my gosh. Pull up. But she thank you. Okay, I know she does. Wisdom. So thank you for joining <laughs> us. I hope you guys enjoyed and have a blessed week. All right. Ciao. Bye. Ciao. She said, Ciao, say bye. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>